This is Wenge. It is a beautiful chocolate brown and black streaked wood. This is going to be the neck. So I have my channels completed for the D-tube and the flanking carbon graphite rods. There is no truss rod on this neck. This is the D-tube that I'll be using and it fits in the slot as well as the carbon fiber rods. This is definitely a unique way of building necks. It is non-traditional for sure, but I think it is modern and sleek. This D-tube is made out of carbon fiber and it is lighter than the wood that we remove from the neck and much lighter than that steel truss rod. I see a future where we don't even use wood anymore for necks. Look at the shape of this D-tube. What does that remind you of? It looks like a very small, tiny little neck, doesn't it? Imagine one of these, the exact size of a neck, minus a few millimeters, where we could install a fretboard above it and wrap it in a veneer so that everything the user touches is wood, but the actual rigidity comes from carbon fiber. That's a future that I wanna see one day. This was the first hurdle that I thought I needed to get over. I didn't know how I was going to bend the frets. I didn't know how I was going to seat and press the frets. Those were all unknown variables and I got through them.
So I wanted to demonstrate some of my failures in an attempt to bend frets. And I designed these molds. They're essentially just a negative and positive mold that I can clamp together to try to bend fret. And I designed a handful of them at different curves. And these are the exact same curves as the curves in CAD. But there's a problem. And I tried different materials. I tried stainless steel, nickel, and even the softest fret wire, which is brass. And the problem is that these fret wires have a memory and they spring back to life even after you bend them. So what I did was I used this engineered wood. It's called Kebony and it's for flooring and it has those um, tongue and groove on each side. And when I cut them, it actually was ideal to place the fret wire right inside them and it kind of held them in place in that tongue and groove. So here I have the fret wire and I'm going to bend it. So this is torqued down pretty hard. And I even left this like this clamped overnight. And the results are the same. When I take this out of the mold, it springs back to life. So whether this has been clamped down for 30 seconds or 12 hours, when I unclamp it, it's perfectly straight again. So this is different than a radius when you're putting a radius like this. What we're doing is we're taking a curve and bending it perpendicular to the tang. And it just doesn't work with these molds. So this was my first failure. And I actually machined quite a bit of these, of these molds at different curves, depending on where we're at on the fretboard. And they didn't work. So this was another failed method. So after we have the frets curved, we need a way to press them into the fretboard. And when you have a normal fret press call, it's straight. And a lot of that straightness that's pressing down will not even engage with the fret. Right, so this is your fret press, it's coming down, it's not touching it. So what we need is fret press calls that are also curved. And so I built these in CAD and I CNC these out of oak. It's a very strong wood. And I thought that I would just use this. I'd put this on top of the fret. Just to show you an example. And then I'd use the fret press. Press down and it would essentially distribute the pressure and press the fret down. Well, this didn't work either. It just didn't work for a number of reasons and one, this is a flat surface. Calls have an actual indentation for the call to seat onto the fret crown. And these don't have that. I used it a couple of times. It just wasn't efficient. So failure two. So my process essentially was winging it and everything was done on the fly. And I tried to work out a process with each fret, trying to figure out what worked and what didn't. So I landed on a very crude process for pressing these in, and it's not something that I think is worthy of filming. It would just have been filming a lot of frustration and cursing.
frets are currently leveled, crowned, and polished. And run into the same issue with having curved frets. You have files, such as your crowning file, that are essentially straight and made for straight frets. And trying to use them to crown curved frets is very difficult. You can imagine the struggles for trying to follow a curved frat with a straight file. The board has one coat of oil on it, and I did seal the neck itself. So you have a lot of folks telling you when you're sanding your neck not to go with too high of a grit, but I disagree. I went up to about 8,000 grit on this neck until it looked like glass and felt like glass and was shining. This is one coat of true oil. It feels magnificent. Everything on this neck feels like glass. I did add the string through ferrules. For the most part, the strings will go in here and we won't see any locking nuts on the face. The locking nut will be on the back and it's gonna be a custom job that I build in the next vid. Now, a quick note on this. I'm starting to question why necks always have a specific height here and then one that's much taller at the heel. This neck is very stable. It has a D-tube carbon fiber rod in there as well as four carbon fiber structural rods flanking it. So stability is no longer an issue. We don't need to have a thicker portion of the neck here close to the heel anymore. So this is just one straight thickness all the way to the transition. And everything the user touches is perfectly radius and profiled all the way to the edge. And if you'll notice, if I put my thumb here, which is the furthest point you can get your hand. So when I'm playing, there's my first finger. And then I can go way beyond that. So lots of access. Him and I can actually detect really small deviations on a line. And if your side dots are even slightly off in some manner, you're, he and I can detect that. So I do this on the CNC, and what it guarantees me is the CNC is following that line. So even if the dots are off center, they're not off the line. And it makes just for a more kind of visually perfect side dot array. It's quite a beautiful neck. The majority of this guitar is the neck. The body is just there to really hold the pickups. Exponential scale nine string neck. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. <laughs>